for a lot of us, this is such a devastating year. Um, you talked about the loss and, you know, we're hearing it on the news and there's this, this constant concern and, and fear that we are all carrying, um, some way more than others with the loss for sure. Um, but this is a way to have a bright side. This is a way to know that it wasn't all devastation and loss and horror and a horrible year. There were the good things that you said to come out of it. There was creativity. There was... Um, there was family, there was nature, there was the slowing down and appreciation of the things around us. Um, and I, and I really hope that, you know, this project and, and the experience of enjoying all the art and, and fruit of the, the year will have us all realize like, wait, this wasn't such a bad thing. And, and hopefully we can remember the good. My name is Megan Fiddler Carey. I'm a Reading resident and also today representing uh, the Reading Cultural Council. This year I'm currently the co chair. And what the Reading Cultural Council does is support artists in the community who apply for mini grants um, to fund their fine arts, performing arts, or literature projects, um, either in the schools or in the community by Reading residents or for Reading residents. And the Reading Cultural Council distributes funding that we get from the Massachusetts Cultural Council. And again, it's um, mini grants that we accept from artists who apply. Hi, I'm Sherry Vandenacker and I am here as part of the Reading Coalition for Prevention and Support and also as a grantee of the Reading Cultural Council. <laughs> for a project that I'm doing. And so I'm so excited to learn more about the Cultural Council and also to share uh, my project. Right, this year we um, was, a, I know everybody's getting sick of hearing this, but this year was a very different year for um, our applications that we got. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of grants that we gave out last year were put on hold because people were unable to complete their projects, as everyone can imagine. Um, performances were canceled or postponed. Um, big events that were happening in the community had to be postponed or canceled. Um, so a lot of it rolled over. But then we got a lot of new, really creative ideas this year, which was very exciting for the council. Um, we met on Zoom, which was very different uh, than our, our typical monthly meetings and our typical interviews with applicants. Um, but we learned about some really creative ways that, uh, especially performances, were reaching out to the community over Zoom or in socially distanced, socially responsible outside ways. Um, also, creative projects that could be done at different times. So they weren't necessarily one-time performances or one-time events. And that's what the Pandemic Peace Photo Project was that we were very excited to have Sherry apply for um, in partnership with the library, among others. Um, so Sherry, please tell us a little bit about the project, about the original vision for the project. And then I'm happy to share with you the reaction that we, the members of the Cultural Council had when we learned about it. Oh, great. Thanks. <laughs> so at the beginning of the project, you know, I'm an English professor. And so I was thinking about the fact that this uh, pandemic is going to be pretty life changing for most of us. And I was thinking about primary research. So I was encouraging people to write journals. I was especially encouraging my children to write journals. But I realized that today the journal is really looks more like this than like this. So uh, more people were taking photos of things to do with the pandemic. And we as a family were doing that as well. The lines at grocery stores and we started doing the social distancing, signs on the highway, um, all kinds of the, the changes that were happening. And as the pandemic wore on though, and we all got sick of it, and we heard about losses, and we heard about job losses, and we heard about deaths and illness, 
I also simultaneously noticed that people were incredibly resilient and creative in how they were doing things like performances, like you've just mentioned, like academics, uh, like family connections, like celebrations, like marriages and celebrating births and so forth. And so without wanting to or intending to sugarcoat the hard realities of the pandemic, I also did want to document this creativity and this resilience. And so I thought that since we all have um, a bunch of pictures on our phones, and since we have a shared experience in the community, despite divisions that occur over politics and so forth, I thought it would be great if we came together as a community and shared how we have responded to the pandemic and how we have maintained our peace and look forward um, the sense of promise to the future. So I, uh, I'm a coordinator of this project, really. It's really the town of Reading's project. It isn't mine, it's the town's. And um, I do love photography. One of the ways I have been dealing with the pandemic is by taking my camera out into the forest. I happen to love bird photography. It's a strange passion, but you know, what the creator gave me, I guess, is my passion. So um, I thought that it would be really exciting to collect these photos from people and document them. And we've been able to do that with the help of the library and the cultural council. What I, I love about this too, um, because you you and I had spoken early on in the pandemic and, and you had mentioned the journaling and I thought that was such a brilliant idea. I was definitely going to keep a journal because, you know, in a hundred years, people are going to want to know what were the people of Reading doing during this crazy crisis. Just like you said, I'm not so in such a good habit of keeping a journal and keeping the pen, but I did take a million pictures and I did, you know, send a bunch of text messages and correspondence that I wouldn't have normally probably done to people, you know, near and far that have touched, have been in my life in different ways. Um, and the one thing that I really like about this photo project is it's it's a great way to reflect and to kind of retell the story, because not only am I excited to go back through the pictures, but um, the way that we're documenting it, the way you're collecting the pictures through the Google form, which I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit more when we're telling people how they can participate. Um, so full, full disclosure, I, I uploaded some of my own pictures um, as part of this project and you get to tell the little bit of the story. So it's a reminder um, of that snapshot of my life in my time that I can now share with future, future onlookers, whoever's looking through these pictures. Um, and I think that that's an important part. It's not only journals, it's not only um, kind of keeping track of the actions or even the photographs, but it's the stories. And I love the sharing of stories. And that really does bring us together, like you say, because I'm sure my stories aren't necessarily unique to me. I have, a, you know, one of the photos I contributed is from the Reading Town Forest, which is one of our beautiful places to walk, which is one of the places I imagine you take photos of birds. And I think a lot of people are going to say, I have seen that exact view that <laughs> Megan Fiddler Carey took a picture of. Um, and then we can connect in that way. And so I think that's just such a special part of this project. I think you're exactly right that this is, it's called the photo project, but it probably should be called a visual story project. Yeah. You know, too late to revise the grant <laughs> now, but, but you're right because uh, I don't want people to feel like, oh, well, I just snapped some photos with my phone or it's just something in my yard. That is the story. That is the message. And we don't have as many uh, contributions yet as I hope we will by the time it's over, but already we're starting to see some themes. So, and that's really fun. And I think that this will be wonderful material for people to do primary document research on eventually, as well as uh, to tell, to remind themselves of what this experience was for them and to retell their own stories to their children and their grandchildren later. Nature is definitely one of the themes. It looks like a lot of people have um, reconnected with nature in ways, in, in deeper ways and found a lot of solace there. Animals has been another. Uh, I had the opportunity to dog sit for the wonderful 
Maddie <laughs> Fiddler well, Carey. There's a there's a Maddie picture coming. I just I wanted to see if I had a better one that's a little bit crisper and clearer, but there's a good Maddie the dog picture coming. <laughs> it was uh, before the pandemic really took hold. It was probably the last time you were out of town, I would guess, before the pandemic took hold when we were just starting to be in the news and you went to a wedding and so Maddie, I'm sure, has been keeping your family happy, and Cooper has been keeping another family happy. And uh, a lot of people have put in pictures of alternative ways of celebrating events, uh, a beautiful shot of a wedding that happened at someone's front door, the annual Super Bowl party that had to happen outside. And then I think we have a picture of a Thanksgiving that wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> where Megan Fiddler Carey's family uh, blew up a plastic turkey and put it on the table as kind of a <laughs> notice of you know what we would have had in another time when the tape when all the chairs would have been filled that's right mm -hmm. that's right I think it's been you know in place of the sadness the loss that we feel um you know, I, I I think the resilience is that a lot of people have been backfilling it with creativity that ends in joy, um, that results in joy. Uh, certainly that's what happened with Thanksgiving. We were really bummed at my house that we were missing Thanksgiving, our traditional celebrations. Um, and then we got silly with it. <laughs> Just like you said, we had an inflatable turkey and we, you know, dressed up in our crazy clothes and zoomed with family, which I think a lot of people did, um, which was a bit chaotic but no more chaotic than it would have been normally, right? With when you get together with your family celebrations with traffic and snow and all of the things. So it was just a transferred chaos, I suppose. But it's- uh, Somebody submitting a photo of the Zoom meeting or the Zoom family party or something, because that really has kept so many of us connected to some extent, at least through this. So, but what role do you feel like art has been playing uh, through the pandemic and keeping us all, I don't um, know, pain is the right word, but less crazy? Well, I guess that's still yet to be seen. That's how, when people ask me that question, you know, how are you doing? I say, well, as far as I know, doing well. So I think, so I'll speak from what the submissions that we got from the cultural council that, yeah. um, you know, certainly the Reading, uh, the, the singers, the city singers said that they had so much fun where they thought they weren't going to have any. So exactly that point that I'm making where there was a loss and they were saddened by what that was missing. But then the alternative ended up being so much fun and such a joy and brought joy to as many people as tuned in. You know, there was great feedback for the performance that they did do online. Um, and then, you know, and it was able to be shared. It could even last a little bit longer. So usually things that are one-time events that if you miss them, you miss them. There's a new way of recording and capturing and kind of keeping, archiving um, some of these bits of art that hopefully we can drag out and share a little bit longer. Um, I know that uh, the, I forget, I should have looked it up, who applied for a grant, they repaved, I believe they repaved their outdoor space, their parking lot, so that they could have performances outside, which I thought was just brilliant. And that's what they applied for. That's what they used their grant funding for this year, which I think in a typical year, no chance would we be funding asphalt. But for this purpose, it was exactly right. It was exactly the perfect time to ask for something like this and for the purposes that they did. And what a wonderful idea and how wonderful that they were like, you know, by hook or by crook, we will get this performance out and make it safe for people to come watch it. Um, so I think that that's cathartic for the the actors. I think it's cathartic for the the theater planners, and I think it's certainly cathartic for the theater goers who you know had sort of mourned the loss of of their performances that they love to go see. So I think that creativity. And even just knowing that it's happening. So even people that are saying, you know, oh, I know that there's there's an event going on in town. I wish I could get down there. But just knowing that there's so much happening and so many ideas generating is, is I think, really important and cathartic. And, and I think we'll find out has been leading to healing 
Um, I'm very excited to see some of the artwork to come out of the schools, some of the artwork to come out of, um, the, you know, we've got lots of fine artists in this town, which I would never have known about had I not sat on this cultural council. So um, I know that the um, downtown Reading, we're still gonna do the Reading Walk, where in the past we, we had put up, it was for the Reading 375 celebration a couple of years ago, we had artists display their work in storefront windows. And then at your leisure, you can go by and, and see it. You know, if there are places where you can find out who the artists are, you get there are places to find out where the art is so that you can make sure you check off every one. Or it's something that, you know, just while you're taking a stroll downtown to jump into the bookstore or go to the one of the restaurants, you happen to see it in the window. And it's it's so nice for for artists to have a place to display their art and for the residents to enjoy it. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing how these experiences are interpreted um, over the next several months when we get to see some of this stuff displayed. And I wanted to ask you to share with the community here now, um, exactly, I mean, I know the answer to this, but how are, why did you apply for funding for uh, the, the photo project? So as I, uh, I thought of the project as collecting photos, but as you're saying, one of the things about the pandemic is it's really leading us to think about, I guess you could say genre um, of art and different genres and more creative and collaborative genres in ways to share, share work. So uh, that was part of it. And another part of it was about collaboration because as we know, um, all of these groups in town, whether it's the cultural council and the artist councils and, uh, community singers, community musician groups, there's so much cross pollination amongst all these groups. So initially I thought that we would just have kind of a digital archive of photos. And we've been working with the library on that. And so I really wanna thank Amy Lannon, our director, and I want to thank Eileen Barrett, the local historian and librarian, and Catherine uh, Scannell for their work because they connected with Noble, which North of the Boston Library Exchange, who's going to host a, um, an archive of all these photos. And they developed ways for us to submit the photos electronically that would help with the cataloging. And they're doing all this for free. So I didn't need a grant. But as I talked with folks, we realized that there is also, as you say, this pleasure of seeing a physical piece of art. Yeah. And so uh, we thought that we could select photos that are submitted and print them and then we can have a traveling exhibition. So that is one of the things that the council funded in terms of this grant. So if we get enough submissions to make the uh, uh, a photo collection, um, we can do that. And I think it would be really fun to display it perhaps at some of the nursing homes or places where people have mobility issues or even issues with accessing the technology and in the schools so that students can use them as we were saying as kind of primary source documents and in addition the library thought it would be good to, to put together a book a physical collection and that gets to the storytelling aspects you can have the photo and then the story people submit about the photo and together and um, so the the council funded that aspect as well so i'm hoping that we'll get enough um, submissions to do these various this multifaceted way of using these images so we'll have them electronically but also physically and in book format Loved it. So that's what I was getting to when I said how the, the council reacted after when we, you know, we heard all the applicants and then we did our debrief. That's what we were saying. One of the, you know, we have a rubric that we use when we're um, talking, meeting with applicants about what their, their application has and what the criteria are. And one of the things that we look at is how many, what, how big is the audience for this, this project? And we realized that this audience is, is endless. It's enormous because it's for generations to come. It's in book form so people can check it out of the library. So it, it goes on and on. Um, you know, where one-time performances and one-time events are very valuable and very special, 
there's no way that they can hit as big an audience as your project will be hitting. So that was one of the things that got us really excited. And of course, we all started jabbering about what photos we were going <laughs> to, we were going to include. So um, I'll have to remind them to see if they've, uh, they've uploaded their pictures and stories yet. I um, and I, for anyone who doesn't, I wanted to say, cause you reminded me for anyone who doesn't know about the library archive, it is a, what, it's such a special thing that we have. I learned about it first at the, during the Reading 375 celebrations, they asked for residents to submit kind of quintessential Reading photographs, um, just sort of to tell, tell the town's story. And I just thought what a, it's such a cool idea. Um, and it's such a, it's such an important way that we can preserve our, our present history. Um, and so it's really nice that it can be used in this way as well. Yeah, I agree because it's, it's such a paradox that you know we have more photos than ever yep. and yet fewer physical photos than ever or fewer ways of capturing and holding those images than ever. So how can we be really intentional about transferring these digital files into something that uh, can be preserved when we drop our phone in a puddle and the memory's destroyed or something like that? And how can we preserve them for the future as we move into the digital world? And we have to kind of wrestle with that. The idea of a museum is a little different than it used to be. It's mm -hmm. not just objects anymore. So uh, I do love that the library is really forward looking about preserving our digital heritage or our heritage in digital format. So my, my favorite thing that I wanted to, to say about this, the outcome that I imagine, and I want to see if this is part of what you had in mind, is for a lot of us, this is such a devastating year. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about the loss and, you know, we're hearing it on the news and there's this, this constant concern and, and fear that we are all carrying, um, some way more than others with the loss, for sure. Um, but this is a way to have a bright side. This is a way to know that it wasn't all devastation and loss and horror and a horrible year. There were the good things that you said to come out of it. There was creativity, there was, um, there was family, there was nature, there was the slowing down and appreciation of the things around us. Um, and, I, and I really hope that you know, this project and, and the experience of enjoying all the art and, and fruit of the, the year will have us all realize like, wait, this wasn't such a bad thing. And, and hopefully we can remember the good. You mm -hmm. know, we can hold on to the good. So when we think back on 2020 and 2021, it's not always going to be like, oh, that was the worst. But instead, it'll, it'll be more of a positive emotion that, wow, I learned a lot that year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was sadness, but it won't all be just devastation. Like it, it is just... So was that part of your, your goal with this project? It was. And again, not to soft pedal or deny that many people, many families, many communities have suffered incredibly painful impacts from the pandemic. There's no doubt about it. But as we said, some of, uh, some of life is going to change as a result of this, and it's going to change forever. Art will be done differently now. And some of that's exciting. Um, we, I was speaking with Amy Lannon of the library and they were talking about how their programming changed. And while there's loss of not being able to go to a live poetry reading say, there's also gain that you can have um, I, I love poetry as well. A poet read with maybe a national or international reputation and it can be recorded and the audience can grow and expand. And I think education will never be quite the same. You and I are both educators. Work life will never be quite the same. Uh, families might have new ways of connecting. I never would have FaceTimed or Zoomed with people before, but right. now I will. And so maybe this project will also help us record and recognize maybe the genesis of some new ways of doing things that maybe we even value. Well, I'm thrilled about it. And I, you know, I, I hope that I, I was, I had to ask the question if there was a limit to how many photos and stories we could upload, because once you get started, yeah. it's really fun to go through all the photos from the past year and realize how many great yeah. stories there are to share. And, 
And I can't wait to read other people's. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. And even when it isn't fun, you know, it's like, I didn't find childbirth fun, but I found the outcome fun. <laughs> so um, I'm not saying, I'm not exactly comparing the pandemic to childbirth, but even moments of pain can lead to growth and can lead to realization and can lead to pride. Look what we did. Look what we survived. Look how creative we were. Um, look how we handled that. And so I hope that it will also help us recognize that we didn't merely turn, go gray, go gray or your pounds, but we also <laughs> came up with some, some other, like you had said, new ways of doing things that, um, and creative ways of doing things that we should recognize and appreciate within ourselves and within our community. And really, I hope that everyone will contribute because I really would like this. This isn't Sherry's project. This is, I hope there'll be 19,000 or whatever the size our town is these days, 25,000, I don't know, uh, contributors, um, authors of this project, because I'd love to really see what kids took pictures of. Yes. Seeing this whole experience through children's eyes would be particularly interesting, I think. I think it's that. I think we've, we've got to get the kids to upload their stories. And then I think employ the kids to, to get everybody else to do theirs. Because right. they're a lot more persuasive than we are. <laughs> and creative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sherry. I was, I, it was oh. so nice to have this conversation with you and um, talk more about this project. I'm I, I think I've made it clear that I'm really excited about the project and that the Red and Cultural Council is very excited about it. And uh, we look forward to supporting any more projects like this. If uh, anyone watching knows of creative projects like this, um, in addition to our, our staples of the fine arts and performing arts. But um, Sherry, it was wonderful talking with you. Well, it was great talking with you. It always is. Um, maybe we should share some information for people if they want to make a contribution to the project. Um, oh. So we have a Facebook page called Pandemic Peace and Promise Photo Project. The five P's there, Pandemic Peace and Promise Photo Project. Um, we've been fortunate that some of the local media, the Reading Post and the Patch and the Advocate have written up stories about it. So you could look uh, up how to contribute to it through those stories. And we also have a Gmail, pandemicpeacephotos at gmail.com, pandemicpeacephotos at gmail.com. When you send an email, you'll get an auto reply with a Google form in it where we have you fill out your contact information and um, give us a release and if, let us know if there are people in the photo that we can identify. And as Megan said, where you can share the story of the photo that you want um, people to know about it. So please, I know it takes a couple of minutes to go through the form, but please, um, please give this gift to the future.